This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. Gentlemen, may I have your attention? I want to introduce to you in this corner of the good and the right stands a champion robed in white. His height exceeds the heavens, his weight outweighs the world.
for our reflections, we shall look at Exodus 21 verses 1 to 11. These are the laws you are to set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years. But in the seventh year, he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free alone. But if he has a wife when he comes, she is to go with him. If his master gives him a wife, and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master, and my wife and children, and do not want to go free, Then his master must take him before the judges. He shall take him to the door or the doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl. Then he will be his servant for life. If a man sells his daughter as a servant, she is not to go free as male servants do. If she does not please the master who has selected her for himself, he must let her be redeemed. He has no right to sell her to foreigners because he has broken faith with her. If he selects her for his son, he must grant her the rights of a daughter. If he marries another woman, he must not deprive the first one of her food, clothing, and marital rights. If he does not provide her with these three things, she is to go free without any payment of money. You just listened to the audio version of Exodus 21 verses 1 to 11. What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil. Dear listener, don't allow him to deceive you to sin to join him in hell. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal savior. Get baptized into a true Bible-believing church and live daily for the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Your eternal life will be guaranteed. God bless you. Listener, you're welcome to Healthy You. Today we're going to talk about thrombophlebitis or blood clots. I have here with me Mr. Hammond to help us in this. Mr. Hammond, you're welcome. Thank you. My name is Sharon Mesadeku. Michelle was a healthy 24-year-old woman who came to a town on the western coast of Namibia in Africa to enjoy the excellent kites boarding conditions for which the region is known. She was enjoying her spot in perfect weather when suddenly a strong gust of wind caused her to lose control of her kite in shallow water. She fell, struck a ridge of sand in the shallow water, and broke her leg. The accident prevented her from walking, and on the third morning, she was found dead in her bed. A medical examination of her body is to determine 
the cause found that a blood clot had formed in the vein of her leg. It had broken free and traveled through her heart into her lungs. So what causes blood clot? Blood clot that form in our veins, a condition called thrombophlebitis. Blood clot that form in the veins of our legs can cause serious and even deadly complications as they did in Michelle. They form as a defense mechanism against damage to our um, blood vessel. The clot is intended to seal the damaged vessel to mm. prevent possible bleeding. So are the clots that form in the veins of our legs usually dangerous? Well, in our legs, the veins are located in two areas, just under the skin and deep within the leg muscles. If a clot forms in the vein just under the skin, it is not dangerous. You will feel a painful cut under the skin that will hurt more when you put pressure on it. You will also see redness and swelling around the painful cord, but there is no cause for concern. A clot that forms in the vein deep in the leg, however, a so-called deep vein blood clot can be free and travel into your lungs, blocking a major blood vessel. This complication is called a pulmonary embolism, and it can kill you. A recent study looking at people who develop a deep vein blood clot found that 3% of them die within one month. So what complications do deep vein blood clots cause? What are the symptoms warning me that I have a blood clot formed in the vein deep in my leg? Well, unfortunately, on rare occasion, the blood clot will cause no symptoms. Usually, however, your leg will become swollen, tender and painful. Most noticeably, when you stand or walk, you may also develop a fever. So what complications do deep vein blood clots cause? Okay. As in Michelle, the clot can break loose and travel into our lungs. Mm -hmm. Other complications can occur because of the way our veins were created. They were created with one-way valve designed to keep our blood flowing out. up mm -hmm. out of our legs toward our heart and to prevent blood from flowing back into our legs due to the effect of gravity. Mm -hmm. Clot that form in the deep veins can damage these valves. They will begin to leak and the blood that flows back towards our legs can cause our legs to swell open source may even um, develop. So what are the risk factors for my developing a deep vein blood clot? Well, blood clot form whenever blood flows through a vessel slows, which often happens when a vein is injured. Okay. Michelle had direct injury to the veins of her leg, but you can enjoy a vein in any number of ways. It may be bruised during a fall or when you stray debris at work. Whatever the cause, the injury causes inflammation of the vein, and the inflammation causes the vein to narrow, slowing blood flow. If you are confined to bed for a prolonged time, your blood flow slows, increasing your risk. Pregnancy or being overweight increases pressure on the veins of your abdomen, slowing blood flow out of your legs. Even sitting for hours at a time at work or while traveling on a long trip can mm -hmm. cause blood to clot. Clot, okay. So, uh, how are blood clots treated then? You see, treatment depends on the location of the clot. Clots formed in a vein just under your skin do not require hospitalization. Your doctor may recommend applying a warm, wet cloth to heat the painful area several times a day, and you can expect the symptoms to improve within a week or two. Mm -hmm. But deep vein blood clot, however, need much more intensive therapy. You need to wear support stockings to prevent your leg from swelling. Support stockings help damage valves function more effectively. If your leg becomes swollen, you will need to keep it elevated. You will need a blood thinning medicine given by injection to prevent the clot from enlarging. And another given by mouth to prevent a clot from reforming. Because a clot that breaks loose and travels to your lungs can kill you, hospitalization and surgery may be needed. Um, to remove the clot or to place a filter in your main abdominal vein to prevent the clot from traveling into your lungs. Okay. How can anyone prevent blood clots from forming in the first place? Oh, okay. Inactivity increases your risk of developing a blood clot. So if you must sit for long periods of time at work or while traveling, get up and take a short walk every hour. If circumstances prevent you from taking short walks, Flex your ankles and press your feet hard against floor or foot treads or at least 10 times every hour. 
Also, avoid wearing clothes that fit tightly around your waist. They compress your veins and slow blood flow from your legs. I think, listener, when we all heard about black clots, we didn't think it was this serious. Thank yeah. you very much, Mr. Hammond, for making us understand what black clot is. Okay. Black clot is written by Dr. Richard Yako, a medical doctor working in the United States. The medical views expressed in this program are his and may differ for your particular health needs. If you need medical advice, please consult your doctor. Thank you very much once again, Mr. Hammond. My name is Sharon Mensa Doku. This has been Healthy. For any inquiries or contribution, you can contact us on plus two three three two four four six seven three five two eight or zero two four four two three five zero one seven or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF five nine five Adenta Greater Accra Region Ghana Nobody turn you around, turn you around, turn you around now to let nobody turn you around. Keep on the Galilee. I would not be a liar. Tell you the reason. Let nobody turn you round, turn you round, turn you round now. Don't you let nobody turn you round. Keep on the Galilee. Now don't you let nobody turn you round, turn you round, turn you round now. Don't you let nobody turn you round. Keep on the Galilee. I would not be a backslide. He's waiting and watching, watching for you. And I greet you in the name of our Lord and Master Jesus. I am Eriko Usu Jan from the School of Theology and Mission, Valleyview University. You are once again welcome to Moment of Truth. But before we begin to go into the Word of the Lord, I'll urge you so you close your eyes wherever you are. And we pray together. Father in heaven, we are grateful unto you once again for such divine opportunity. Even as sinful as we are to just get opportunity once again to hear your voice. I pray committing all the individuals who are listening to you now into your care, that you take control over them. I pray that whatever word that comes out of my mouth will be your word so that you have positive implication on their lives. Take charge in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, once again, I welcome you to Moment of Truth. I am here to discuss with you something I've captioned, learning to live in the kingdom. Learning to live in the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, you know, God's kingdom is real. You know, when he came, he told us that he was going back and he was going to prepare for us a place. And when he is done with the preparation, he will come back. Jesus Christ has never lied. So I'm urging you to believe these words because he will obviously come again. You know, an angel appeared when he was being taken into heaven. When he ascended, 
when Jesus Christ made void the law of gravity by ascending to heaven, the angel said, look, this Jesus that you see being taken to heaven, he returned in the same manner. When you go through the Bible, you see a deep series of evidence indicating, pointing to the fact that Jesus will obviously come again. And as he said himself, that he was going to prepare for us a place. And the question is, how do we live in this kingdom? Or how are we able to get to this kingdom? And so I've captioned this presentation, learning to live in the kingdom. You know, Paul learned that the things of this world, minus Jesus, are meaningless. You gain everything in this world and do away with Jesus. Everything is vanity. He learned that the most important thing is to know Jesus Christ and that everything else without Jesus is garbage. Look, you get a degree, get whatever, get your master's, do whatever you want to do, get a nice house, get a most current car, get a nice woman as your wife, and do away with Jesus. I say without hesitation that everything is garbage. Education, wealth, power, comfort, and even the American dream is all meaningless without knowing Jesus. It was this belief that allowed Paul to sing God's praises in prison, to write letters of joy and encouragement while rotting in chains, and to go to his death singing hymns of praise because the reality that he lived was not of this world. Paul's reality was the kingdom of God and nothing and no one could take that away from him. They could strip him of his clothes, but they could never touch his title as a son of the living God. They could beat him senselessly with six made of wood, but they could never extinguish the fire in his eyes. They could spit on his face, but the only way to stop him from proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God was to take his life, which he gladly gave up to be with Jesus Christ. And so with that kind of passion, the good news of the kingdom of God spread like the wildfire in the ancient world. Merchants and slaves, young people and old people, the sick, the poor, the diseased, and the outcast accepted the good news and shouted from mountaintops. And the street canners, it grew from 12 believers to millions of believers in what seemed like moments in the pages of history. My brothers and sisters, we have to pay a price. If only we claim we are Christians, if only we believe in the second coming of Christ, then we need to mimic people like Paul who were never afraid to even die. And if we believe in the imminent return of Jesus, then I think now is the time that each one of us need to wake up from our slumber and do what we ought to do. What drew so many people so quickly? It was the story that is simply so good. It just has to be true. The story that tops all stories. The place where the curse is reversed. The story of the kingdom of God. It was this story that allowed hundreds of thousands of followers in the early church to go bravely to their death because they couldn't imagine going back to the confines of their previous story. My beloved brothers and sisters, some people actually had to suffer just because of the kingdom of God. How are you suffering because of the kingdom of God? What are you going through? Just because of the kingdom of God. Several people in the dark ages had to die. Just because of this kingdom. What are you paying for? Just because of this kingdom. It is high time for you to rise. It is high time for you to wake up. It is high time for you to pay the price. It is high time for you to live as a Christian. As far as the kingdom of God is concerned. They believed and knew the fairy tale was the only true story. And they're willing to die for the truth. Do you have something in your life worth living for? What's dying for? Might I suggest a new reality? The kingdom of the living God. It is no feeble. It is the way and the truth and the life. 
And this leader extends his nails card hands to you tonight, to you this afternoon, to you this morning. I'm urging you, you need not to hesitate. You need to wake up because the kingdom of God is at hand. I want to believe you have accepted. I want to believe you are going to allow Jesus to come into your life. I want to believe you are not ready to pay the price as people like Paul, people like Joseph, people like Abraham, people like Elijah, people like Noah paid. So that when Jesus returned in the second time, you and I would never be found wanting. Thank you so much. And I pray that the Lord will bless and keep you. And all the words you've heard would have good implication on your life. I thank you. Please close your eyes and let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful unto you once again for these words. It's our prayer today that these words will transform us. That we will never live as we lived before. So that we can live as though you are coming today. Help us so we can love you and naturally, automatically keep your law. We thank you so much for we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Thank you very much for staying with us. Once again, you can reach us on plus two three three two four four six seven three five two eight or zero two four four two three five zero one seven or email us at radio at vvu dot edu dot gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF five nine five. Adenta Greater Accra Region. I believe today's magazine has been a blessing. May the good Lord's hand be in your life. Amen. Remember to tune in same time tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>